Hello, my name is Susan Max Salmon. I'm the executive director of the International Arts and Mind Lab, which is a center for applied neuroaesthetics at the Peterson Brain Science Institute at Johns Hopkins University. I have been working for the last 10 years, thinking really deeply about um, how the arts change our brains and bodies. Um, even before that, I started um, some projects around curiosity and arts for children, uh, a company called Curiosity Kids and another company called Curiosityville. And my work has always been about cultivating surprise and helping you change perspective, uh, whether that's how you see a color, how you think about culture, um, what science really means and how what we know about how our bodies change and, and grow can be used for um, greater purposes around health and well-being. So the work in my lab really focuses on three things. One is research, and we're very interested in just trying to understand how the arts are changing us. And we're really agnostic about the art form. And we're also um, very open to different ways of knowing. So maybe that's interpreting a piece of art or understanding something more from a qualitative perspective. Or we may look more deeply uh, using partners that have uh, experience in things like fMRI or biomarkers and very much around um, how we think about problem to solution. So I call the work that we do solution science. We also, um, in the last several years, have started to think about how do we share this area of neuroaesthetics or what I call neuro arts. How can we help train arts practitioners to know no more about how their bodies change and brains change on the arts and how they can use that knowledge to enhance their practice? And we're about ready to launch our first certificate in neuroaesthetics next summer. We also have been interested in the area of cultivating community. And I think that's a large part about what this conference and this gathering is with you today. We have been very interested in what does it mean to build a field? What does it mean to create an ecosystem and to come together? And um, to that end, I'd like to share with you a project that our lab has been working on with the Aspen Institute over the last two years. Uh, about two years ago, we realized that um, so many people were working in arts um, using the arts and aesthetic experiences in schools, in community centers, in, hus in hospitals and healthcare settings. But we also saw that there was a great fragmentation in these different sectors. So sometimes there were artists, sometimes there were arts practitioners that had background in arts therapy, sometimes their music, sometimes their visual arts, sometimes their dance. We also saw researchers working in this area using some of the tools and techniques that technology has provided to try to understand what was happening within the brain. Public health folks have come into this work to really look at how to build community. Policymakers in many countries around the world have also been thinking more deeply about this work but they don't know each other. So culture and health don't know each other. Science and technology don't often work together with the arts. Uh, architects, dancers don't know each other, yet space and context really matters together. So we met with the Aspen Institute and we sat out on a course to talk with literally hundreds of people all over the world through a series of surveys and stakeholder gatherings, um, surveys and other instruments that we were able to put together to really take the pulse of all of these very diverse communities with the hope of being able to see what the through lines were. The result of that is the Neuro Arts Blueprint, which was released on December 1st. And I'm extremely proud of this work. We have really worked hard to make sure that the work represents all of the constituents, but is a roadmap on how do we build this emerging field of neural arts, which is at the intersection of science, technology, and the arts. Um, I'm gonna share a short video with you that gives you a little bit more information about the work that we have embarked on. We have a five-year implementation plan, and you can go to www.neuroartsblueprint to read the blueprint and learn more about the work. My hope is to change your perspective about the arts and aesthetic experiences to help deepen your understanding about why this work is so important, 
not for the people that can afford to go to the symphony or go to a museum or to create art, but for all of us, for practice in our everyday, for stress, for anxiety, for all kinds of physical symptoms and disorders, and also for learning. So again, thank you so much for inviting me to be with you today. And I look forward to having more conversations. Bye-bye. The arts and aesthetic experiences impact our biology and behavior. The power of the arts is something we feel intuitively, but we'd like to understand that more. Igniting a symphony of activity, a complex physiological network of interconnected systems are involved. Technology has really uh, helped us uh, better understand what happens in the brain and the body. So we are now able to understand how music or our dance or any other art form uh, can impact our physiology. Non-invasive technologies like fMRI, PET scans, EEGs, and mobile brain body imaging are tools that make visible the invisible. Don't you wake up yet, give me some time. We now know the higher order of brain systems that are most impacted by the arts, including cognition, emotion, reward, and movement and biomarkers like heart and respiration rates and eye tracking are helping scientists develop a more complete picture of the body and brain on art. Scientists, clinicians, and arts practitioners are translating this knowledge into innovative arts-based solutions to the most challenging health issues around the globe. In people living with Alzheimer's disease, FMRI studies show that listening to familiar music activates a brain network spared from damage, where musical memories can still be enjoyed, while singing helps improve cognition. PTSD can block the brain region responsible for language and speech, known as Braca's area. Using a mix of art forms, therapists are helping trauma survivors express themselves non-verbally so they can process their experiences and heal. Technology is catalyzing both research and practice, helping the field to collect, observe, and synthesize data to consider the right dose and dosage of art, including personalized prescriptions. There are a number of technologies that will advance neuroarts, and machine learning is one of them. Making arts-based solutions more accessible and scalable to individuals and communities around the world. The use of virtual platforms has increased participation and access to art therapy. Let's so, see it in action, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reaching populations that probably would not be uh, ordinarily exposed to various art forms. The convergence of science, the art, and technology is revolutionizing how we care for one another, from the clinic to the communities we live in. With research in the neuro arts, we can reduce healthcare costs, improve people's lives, and gain a scientific understanding of the most mysterious thing in the universe, the human brain. <laughs>